Hello everyone, I hope you've had a very good week. It's Pastor Derek and Sel Julia coming your way from the marriage school. As promised last week, we are here today with a brand new series. And today we would like to talk about things you should never do in your marriage. So I want you to say, thank God as usual, we have our favorite Pastor Derek here with us. Pastor Derek, you're welcome, and it's a privilege once again to have you today. Thank you very much for having me, and it's a privilege to be had <laughs> here uh, once again. We thank God for His grace and mercies. Beloved, we want to trust God that you are all doing well, and these short videos are helping you. If they are, please let us know. Send us comments, let us know that, and messages, let us know that they are helping you yes so today we are looking at things we should not do in our marriages mm -hmm. one thing you have to understand is that every marriage has a culture and the culture determines how the marriage takes care of its uh, uh, occupants right okay so you build the marriage and then the marriage builds you all right you take care of the marriage and the marriage takes care of you how you handle the marriage determines how you will be blessed by it how it will help your life right so today we're going to look at a number of things that you shouldn't do if you want your marriage to be a wonderful one that you will enjoy and this one goes for both men and women in the past we've had a few on men but this time we, we it's go for both men and women we are using that to clear the way that we can start doing the women one as well all right so uh the first thing you should learn not to do in your marriage is to shout at each other when you are communicating unless the house is on fire <laughs> if the house is not on fire there's no, there's no reading shout. there's no reason screaming for anybody to come or anybody to do anything learn to communicate learn to talk instead of screaming mm -hmm. shout that hey what is that, that no you don't need all of that you don't need screaming at each other, shouting at each other. Just talk. The person will understand. Sometimes we, we have this notion that, oh, if you don't scream, they will not take you seriously. But sometimes you just don't need all of that. You don't need all that. Just talk to the person. You want your home to be a calm yeah. place, a, a peaceful place, yeah. a relaxing and a relaxing environment. environment. And screaming raises tension. It raises stress. <laughs> screaming also easily sets the pace for abusive language to follow. Yeah. Okay, it sets the pace for abusive language to follow. So always talk like you're talking to a respectable human being, mm -hmm. somebody you love and respect, so that it blocks the, the access of the enemy from infiltrating and causing tempers to go high. Because once you start screaming, it, tempers can easily go high, then abuse can start coming in, insult can start coming in, and even physical abuse can start coming in. It all starts with raised voices. Mm -hmm. So try as much as is possible not to shout at your husband when he's wrong, not to shout at your wife when she's wrong. Talk, communicate, talk. Things will be well and God will help you. Amen. Can I just add um, yeah. to what you just said? Yeah. That somebody will argue that usually they, they, people tend to shout when they are angry or something like that. Mm. So can we also add to this that even in anger, we should try as much as possible not to shout. Because one thing shouting does is that it never solves a problem. If anything, it makes it worse. Yeah. So even in your anger, no matter how angry you think you are, or no matter how angry you feel, as much as it is within your power, try to talk calmly. Because when you talk calmly, you may even end up solving the problem than making it worse. So no matter what happens, no matter the emotions that we are feeling or what we find ourselves in, Let's do our best to ensure that we are communicating. We are not screaming at each other or shouting at each other. You can say the same words mm -hmm. without screaming. shouting. Yeah. It goes against your health. If there are children in the house, they get so scared. Yeah. When we are screaming at each other, it, it's just not on. It's not good for your health. It's not good for your spouse's health. It's not good for your children's mental health. It's not good. Your neighbors will easily call police that somebody is killing somebody in the house. Mm -hmm. And if, for you, all you may know, it it's may not, not anything so serious. Yeah. So please, learn not to allow your emotions. The Bible says that it's only the fool who, when he gets angry, he makes everybody know he's angry. Mm -hmm. So even in your anger, you can still control the, the, the tone and the, 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 the level of your, 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 your voice. Let's learn to control our voices. Yeah. In our communication with our spouses. 
Thank you, Pastor Larry. What else are we not allowed to do in our marriages? Uh, the next thing you are not supposed to do in your marriage is to allow pornography to come in, to use pornography. You know, there are a lot of married couples who think that their sex life is bland, it's gone boring, it they need to spice it up. And then they think that, oh, if we watch pornography, it's going to spice it up. Number one, pornography is a sin. The people you are watching, they are not a married couple. They are, they are committing adultery mm -hmm. or fornication. Now, if that is what they are doing, why would you want the spirit that is leading them and guiding them in that thing to, to mm -hmm. now have an influence on your marriage? Yeah. Okay. And then also, the next thing is that it raises expectations that are not realistic. <laughs> Many of these porn actors they take drugs they take alcohol they do it for recreation you are a married couple you you can't use those things uh, in so before you realize it's going to create more problems for you because you are beginning to feel that your wife is not as good as that woman in that in that pornography thing and you may be tempted, you may to, be go tempted to now go out to look for somebody who can act exactly can. like that yeah. okay with that, that you, your husband is ejaculating 10 minutes or 5 minutes into 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 action and then you are watching this pornography thing where this guy has gone for 28 <laughs> minutes 1 hour and he's still running and he's not getting tired all of a sudden you think that your, your husband, husband has a useless. problem yeah this is where you may be tempted to go find a sex toy or something to pleasure yourself because mm -hmm. your husband is not man enough but that is not actually the case these people take all sorts of things just so that they are acting it's not a real thing yeah. they are acting so they take other enhancers which you may not be able to take in your marriage so please avoid pornography if you want to have quality sex life just make sure that you have a healthy diet you are exercising well you are resting well you are into each other you are loving each other cherishing each other appreciating each other forgiving honoring each other. each other forgiving each other and just talking with each other about your sex life and you see that god will help you and praying about it too yeah god will help you and you have a decent sex life as a married couple you are not expected to have some form of a, a rambo sex life a jackie chan sex life <laughs> I mean, a standard sex like you. It's okay. Yeah, it's don't normal. go compare yourself with sexual professionals. <laughs> you know, it's an amateur thing in marriage. We are not doing it as pros. <laughs> so please find your level as a couple and operate at that level. Don't stress yourself. Don't bring in all these demons to come and bring you down completely. Be, be, be very careful about this. Thank things. you, Pastor. There, that's so true. I just wanted to add to it that mm -hmm. um, it opens the doors. For, and you just you mentioned it. It mm -hmm. opens the door for demons and all kinds of evil spirits to get into your marriage yeah. and and when they come in it's very difficult to get them out you mm -hmm. realize that things are not going on the way you expect it to be and the reason is because you have allowed demonic um influence into the marriage through the use of pornography so as we have stated it as a married couple don't go near it stay far away from, whether in in movies or in whatever whichever way you want to um consume it ensure that pornography is not Part of your, you cannot entertain pornography in your home and expect the Holy Spirit to dwell there either. It doesn't work like that. So let's be mindful of that. So number three thing we are not allowed to do in a marriage is... Is to hide passwords and PIN numbers from each other. Mm -hmm. You see, when a couple marries, they become one family. The Bible says, and the two shall become one flesh. You become one, okay? If we are one, me, I cannot hide my passwords from myself. I cannot hide my PIN numbers from myself. And if we are one, it means I cannot hide them from my wife or she cannot hide hers from me. A family, a married family is one knit family. We are together. So when you start keeping some information, you start hiding sensitive information from your spouse. You are breaking the marriage apart without knowing. Because there will come a time where a role where your wife has to play or a role where your husband has to play, they will not be able to play because you have denied them access to certain sensitive information. Yeah. Passwords, PIN numbers are extremely important. Because life is such that, you see, when all is going well, you are tempted to feel that nothing will ever go wrong. Mm -hmm. But things do go wrong. You can just wake up in the morning and you can't speak again. Yeah. You can wake up in the morning, you are paralyzed. God forbid, we are not wasting anything on, 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 in, on you. But things happen, okay? Things happen. You may find yourself involved in an accident or, or something. 
And then your wife or your husband needs that information to be able to support you. Mm-hmm. You may be, you may find yourself in a legal issue somewhere, and you, you, there's some evidence that needs to be brought out to bail you out or to help you. And your wife or your husband cannot do that because you are hiding the pin number; they can't get it from you. People have died, and their monies have have been lost with government or with banks or with companies or with institutions because they hid this kind of sensitive information from their spouses and your wife or your husband is going to live in poverty or something and you will not have access to what you have toiled for the two of you and it's going to a stranger because you thought you were too smart Mm -hmm. it is not wisdom to hide your pin numbers from your spouse it is not wisdom and the opposite of wisdom is foolishness it is actually foolish when you feel you are being too smart you are rather being foolish be open if you, if you cannot trust a person enough to give them your PIN number, why did you marry them? Yeah. I mean, if they have no quality enough to have access to PIN numbers and passwords, why did you marry them at all? And if you are not faithful enough to give this in because you are afraid that they will find something that will bring a problem, then you are also not qualified to be a husband or a wife. You must be faithful enough to be able to open up without being afraid. Mm-hmm. Let's do marriage right. So that it blesses us instead of giving us problems. And the man and the woman were naked and they were not ashamed. So yeah. really, if you have nothing to hide, if you are not doing anything dubious behind the scenes, mm. there's no problem allowing your spouse to have access to your pain numbers mm. and your password. Mm-hmm. So we'll go to number four. Yeah, and number four thing you should try to avoid in your marriage is to deny each other of sex. That's the very Generally, we say that men are more demanding than women you may find a a, a situation if you're a man you may find a situation where you find a woman who likes it more than a man then you are blessed you should go and give special offering you are blessed you should go and give special (laughs) offering at church that god has given you a woman who likes it more than you but generally men like it more whatever the case even if your wife is not the one who always likes it, there will be times where she would be in the mood and she would demand, she would want it. You may be tired as a man, you may be in the spirit, you may want to go and pray or something, and your wife says she wants this thing you now. Mean the yeah, I, I, I'm a pastor. There have been times when my wife has put me from prayer to go and it's it's has normal. She? Really? Yeah, that that my wife. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So so make it. Uh, 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 um, uh, make it a, a lifestyle aim, okay. or a, an aim in your marriage that you don't deny each other of sex because the desire sometimes it's like the wind it listed it blow it where well, it listed. listed sometimes you don't know you just be there and then it's like an anointing it comes upon your husband it comes upon your wife they want it please no matter how tired you are you won't die for that those few <laughs> minutes that you allow your wife or your husband <laughs> access to your body you will not die Many couples, as married com- counselors, we come across a lot of couples who are so wicked mm-hmm. when it comes to sex with each other. It is not good. It is not good. Let's try to be generous in this area. The Bible says that if you deny your husband or your wife sex, you are being a fraud. In God's eyes, you are being a fraud. The only excuse he allows is if you are fasting. Not when you are breaking in the evening and continuing the next day. Every time you eat food, you must. you, you are free to also have sex. Okay, so please don't deny each other of sex. Sex, stop giving all the excuses. I am tired, eh, but you had it yesterday. Why must you have it again today? You ate yesterday, you ate again today. Okay, sex should be something that should flow freely in the marriage as water. You should do it as frequently as you can. And 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 and, and when one person wants it, please be kind enough to offer yourself as a holy a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable <coughs> unto, and pleasing to him. unto your wife, okay, or your husband. Do it generously. And if you are just offering to, don't do it grudgingly. Do it Still as do unto it the Lord. as unto the Lord. <laughs> but so whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your, 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 your strength. So still put in that effort. You may be tired, but put in that effort. You will not die. And at the end of the day, you will end up with a happy husband or a happy wife, and the home will be a happy home. A lot of the quarrels we come across in, in marriages, it starts from sexual dissatisfaction or sexual denial. Don't let that happen to you. Be generous. If there are things that are inhibiting your sex life, please try and deal with them so that you can always have the sex at the top. 
God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Derek. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that love is kind mm -hmm. and love is not selfish. Mm -hmm. So just be kind to each other. Yeah. I mean, offering sex when it is not convenient is an act of kindness to your spouse. Yeah. And because you are a loving wife or a loving husband, you don't want to be selfish. You want mm -hmm. to be selfless. Mm -hmm. So do not deny each other sex when required. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've looked at a few things. Do we have time for one or two more? Yeah. Okay. Another thing you should try not to do in your marriage is to stay in separate rooms without any proper <laughs> reason. Mm -hmm. Okay, sleeping in different rooms. Well, because maybe my wife snores, my husband snores. I can't take it. I'm a light sleeper. Unless there's a serious medical reason or whatever, still try and stay in the same room. The Bible says that love endures all things. Love never fails. You see, when you marry a person, you don't just marry a person for the convenient side. Every human being has a good side. Every human being has a rotten or a bad side. It's part of life. When you marry a person, you marry the total package. Okay? You marry the total package. You marry the good, the bad, and the ugly in the person. If you only want the person close to yourself when they can offer you the good things, and when they cannot offer the good things, you push them away, then your love is a selfish kind of love. It is not good. So don't move out of your bedroom just because, oh, my wife snores, or oh, my husband farts, or something. So I, 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 I can't take it. I can't take it. it, it it's, 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 not, it's not a laughing matter. Okay? So... Try your best to stay in the same room. And especially where you have quarrels and misunderstandings. That is one thing that moves couples out, outside of their bedrooms. Mm -hmm. Try your best. Misunderstandings will come. Arguments will come. It is part of life. It is part of life. We will not always see eye to eye. We will not always agree on everything. It's normal for couples to quarrel. But when you quarrel, still try and stay in that bedroom. You know what? You should not allow. The Bible says that do not let the sun go down on your anger. As you stay in that bedroom and your body starts each other, before you realize you're able to put your arms around each other and you're able to resolve. Because no matter what, the marriage is bigger than the two of you. You must humble yourself enough to be able to allow the marriage to work, which means that no matter how offended we are, we should be able to still calm down and work things out. We should still be able to let tempers go down and still keep the marriage going. But when we get offended and we move away quickly like that, we are allowing the enemy to fill the gap. And when we keep doing that, one day, that gap will not be restored. Mm -hmm. Again, I've shared a story on the marriage school yesterday where a couple were having misunderstandings and they moved to separate rooms and they were, it was so sad that they were not talking to each other. They were having nothing to do with each other even though they still lived in the same house. Outsiders thought that, outsiders thought that the marriage was still going on, but they had separated in the same... The wife died for almost a week. The husband didn't know anything about it. The husband did not know anything about it until the workplace called and said that your wife has not been to work for some days now. What is happening? We are not seeing her. What is wrong? Before he went into the room to check and the woman had been dead. When police came and people came, they picked the body and when they verified, she had been dead for days. This man lived in that same house, eating, drinking, watching TV, and his wife was dead in the house and he didn't know. Why? Because of offense. Try your best not to allow offense to separate you. By all means, be angry, but don't sin. Be angry, but don't move away. Don't pack out. Don't walk out. Don't sleep in separate rooms. Try your best. Even in your anger, stay together on that bed. God will do wonders for you. Marriage is not easy. Marriage is tough. It's for tough people. So don't allow your emotions to always move you flip-flopping. God bless you. God bless Thank you, Pastor. You. Before we do the final one, what mm. do you say to uh, people who, say, who insist that because of spiritual reasons, especially our... We have brothers and our pastors who, who always insist on not sharing a room with their spouse because maybe because they are they are pastors or they want to be spiritual. What do you, so they have separate rooms and then when they need each other's services, they go. How about that? It is it is not God's standard. If you don't want a woman close to you, don't marry at all. Paul, Paul said that, yeah, we could also have led about a sister like Peter, who is sitting in Jerusalem with her sister. Okay, Peter had a sister in Jerusalem that they were sitting there together. And he was the first apostle. Actually, Jesus said that, uh, uh, people even say that he's the first pope and all that. And yet, he had he led about a sister. Okay, please, don't be more spiritual than God. God said it is not good for the man to be alone. If he says it's not good for the man to be alone, it's not good for him. It's not good for you to live in your room alone. Yes, there are times you have to separate yourself for fasting. 
Even that, don't, if you are a married person, don't go on 40 day fast when you deny your wife for 40 days. That is not right. If you're a married person, have regular times of fasting, but make it at least, let's say, one week so that you can quickly come back and satisfy your wife. For our incontinence's sake, the Bible talks about it. There have been instances where pastors' wives have ended up sleeping with other people in the church yeah. because of an over-spiritual husband who is always on fasting, always away from the wife, not touching the wife, not having anything to do with her because he, he, he is very spiritual. You 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 will cause your wife to sin. You will cause your husband to sin. Let's stop some of these things. Please, have, 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 have fastings and all that, but quickly come back. Spend time with your wife. Spend time with your wife in the same room. Live in the same room with your wife. The angels, if they will come, they will come. If they will not come, they will not come. Angels are not afraid of women. Read through your Bible. They came to women also. Actually, okay? more often. Yeah, they came more often. God also spoke to women in the Bible. So God won't, is, God is not going to say that I won't talk to you because there's a woman in the room. Or, or I won't, I won't, angels say they won't come there because there's a woman there. The angels are not afraid of women. Sleep on the same bed with your wife. And if God is going to use you, he's still going to use you. If God is going to anoint you, he's still going to anoint you. Brother, you can move into Jerusalem. If God will use you, he won't use you. Please, don't, don't destroy your marriage because you are looking for some anointing you may never get. Walk with God, flow, flow with God, and don't overdo things. Thank you, Pastor Derek. I think we, we can just chip in one more. Right. Uh, another thing you should try and avoid in your marriage is to fail to make investments. Okay. Fail to build things into your future. Yes, nobody knows when anybody will die, but we still trust God for long life. And because of that, if we are going to live long, don't forget that you will grow old. And the energy you have today, you will not have it tomorrow. Okay, as you grow old, you will not remain as strong to keep waking up every morning to run to work and back run to work. So start making investments now. If you want to enjoy your marriage in your old age, start making investments now. Buy shares, buy land, buy houses, start businesses. Okay, make investments so that when you get to the point when you don't have the energy to run around, the business will feed you. Yeah. Your investments will take care of you. Mm. Own houses so that when, when, when you are old, you don't still have to work in order to pay rent or pay mortgage. It's clear. So that the little that comes into your hand, you can still live a comfortable life. Speak into, live into your old age. Have a vision. Make investment. Don't spend everything you earn today. Don't spend all your time today on, on today. Spend some of your time today on tomorrow. Don't spend all your money on today. Spend some of your money on tomorrow. Invest time into the future. Invest money into the future. Invest everything into the future. And also make time to enjoy some here. Here and now. But invest into the future. So that in your old age, you will not struggle. You will not struggle. And it also serves as a backbone. God forbid, in times of emergency, you can fall on some of those things. You can sell something and then it brings you out. But if you are spending everything now, in the times of emergency, you have nothing to fall on. So make sure you are saving, make sure you are investing, make sure you are running businesses. I always advise people, own a business. It is better than just having a job. Own a business and make sure you do it well so that it can take care of you when you get it. There are people who started businesses, Sainsbury's and all those people. They are dead and gone. Their families are still benefiting from the businesses they started. So make sure you, can, you start a business and run a business if you can. Try your best. It will require sacrifice. If you are willing to pay the price, you will never regret it. You will never regret it. God bless you. Thank you so much, Pastor Derek. So, dear couple, no matter what you do, ensure that you are not shouting at each other. You are not hiding PIN numbers and passwords. You are not denying each other sex. You are not watching pornography. You are not sleeping in separate rooms. And you are making investments. So, we come your way once again. Remember that a sweet marriage is possible. God bless you. Share the video for us. Subscribe to our YouTube and our Facebook pages if you haven't done so. And we'll see you next week, God willing. Have God a blessed week. Bye-bye.